Uh, how y'all doing? It's Jared. This is a Benchmade Model 42. This is not my knife. It belongs to AMZ Alex Nav on Instagram. Check out his channel or page, I guess. Instagram page. I'll put a link down in the bio below. I like this knife. This knife is a whole lot of fun. This isn't the first 42 that I flipped. This isn't the first one that I've had, you know, actually had an experience with. But this is the first one that I've ever been in my house. That I've ever had for an extended period. Actually able to play with, you know, in comparison to other knives. Getting out other knives, you know, if I want to pull out a 31 or, you know, 51 anyways. Or I want to pull out a 32, you know, I can... I can do that. I can do a direct comparison between these knives. And it's given me a major appreciation for this knife. I really do like this 42. And, but it's, it's not really for the reasons that I kind of expected. Because this thing has got the reputation of being like the best performer out there. Right? And I mean, for some people, maybe it is. That's, that may be true. But my first impressions when I pick this knife up is it's too small and it's too light. It just doesn't weigh enough, you know, and it's just too small. The handles are too narrow, you know, there's not really all enough to hold on to. This is my initial impression, mind you. I do not think that now because what it's come down to is fun, right? This knife is a lot of fun. It's probably one of the funnest Bally songs to flip that I've ever played with. And the reason is, I believe, is because of that lightness, is because of that actual small size, is what makes it so entertaining to sit here and manipulate, right? Is because, you know, you don't really realize how much muscle you're using when you're flipping a ballet song, right? You don't really... I mean, your hands don't, your hands get, get tired after a while, but it's not like you're pumping weights. It's not like you're really lifting anything. And so, you know, there's no strain, you know I mean? There's none of that, like, and that awe, and you get that stiffness in your hand that doesn't really happen unless you're flipping for, like, eight hours straight, right? And so you don't ever think about the muscles. You don't ever think about the amount of energy and just, you know, all of the blood pumping through your hand, right? But there's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on in your hand when you're actually flipping a knife around, right? And that's what makes such a big difference between something that weighs this 4.2 ounces, like that, you know, this 42 here, and something that weighs 5.1, like this Alpha Beast. There's a massive difference in the overall feel and just manipulation of these two knives, right? Because of that weight, because of just that little tiny bit of weight discrepancy between these two knives is so noticeable, right? And because of that, it feels like I am flipping air. I love twirling this thing. I, I could do this all day. Just, you know, come around, go back into a little bit of a circle, and then come back around and... Well, if I can actually manage to get on the right handle and then spin it, right? Do an actual twirl if I can actually get that thing down. Because this motion here, just a twirl, the, it's so light and there's so little energy that my hands, you know, so little energy that my actual muscles are putting into this. And so it's just fun. That's really all I can bring it down to because if you're, I, I really want to compare it to a bike, right? If you, if you're familiar with like a mountain bike, mountain bikes are a whole lot of fun, right? But you get a mountain bike on the road and there's that friction. There's that resistance from the big fat tire riding on the road. And so it's just harder. You have to put more work into it. You have to put more effort into getting the same amount of motion forward, right? And it's, I think I want to make that comparison to these, this ballet song. Because this thing doesn't take any of that energy. This would be like if you got on a street bike. You get on a street bike with those really narrow tires. It doesn't have any resistance on the road. And you, you're using half, as, half the amount of energy to do the same amount of movement. And it's the same thing with this knife, right? It's the same thing. I'm throwing it hard because there isn't a whole lot of weight. And so I do have to get a decent amount of speed to build up that momentum. But the energy that's required to get that speed is less, right? And so it just feels great. And I think that's one of the reasons that it has such an individualistic feeling, right? The, it has the following, you know, the 42 has the following on the market that it does is I think just because of the amount of fun that this thing is to manipulate. That's really all I can come down to. It's not the overall performance. It's the way that it performs the way it does, right? If that makes any sense. It's the way that it actually performs and not its performance that really impresses me with this thing. So I'm going to get down onto the table, take a closer look at this one.
right? So is this thing the best flipper in the world? Is the Benchmade 42 the best flipper that you can possibly buy? Well, I don't know, because I'm not a good enough flipper to actually be able to make a determination like that, right? Hold on. Now, what I can tell you is that it does perform, and I truly do enjoy this thing. The overall knife, right? What I mean by it's too small and it's too light is because if there's a knife in actual size that I can compare this thing to, it's going to be a BRS bare bones, right? So if you see the actual thickness here, the handle thickness is comparable. The 42 is definitely thicker, but in profile here, it's almost the same size, right? They're very comparable, but this knife is a lot longer, right? It's got a lot longer, a lot slimmer handle, and it weighs more. And so the weight weight behind this thing makes it feel like I'm flipping a pencil, right? That's really what it comes down to with the bare bones here. It definitely does flip well, but it's narrow. I can feel that just the, it feels like flipping a pencil, you know what I mean? Not in the round roundness factor, but just in the overall thinness of the handles, right? That's not something that I run into with the 42 here. Because it is lighter, right? And it's got more, I think it's got a little bit more of a neutral balance on the actual overall knife. And so it just, it, feels better. It holds that weight or that size better. It actually lends to the overall design and character of the knife itself, having this narrow handle, having these narrow, having this narrow profile. And so if that's something you're a fan of, I think that a bigger knife, something like this Alpha Beast here, is just going to feel huge. It's just going to feel fat and massive because you I mean you can see just the overall difference in the size of this you know the size comparison between these two and so it definitely it feels small you I mean if you're used to larger knives if you're used to the heavier bigger knives on the market nowadays this thing really does it's just not a whole lot to hold on to but the actual overall knife itself you know what I mean it does add to the overall design you know what i mean and so it's a good thing i definitely do appreciate it this is a t-latch model here so this is a kind of a predecessor to the actual spring latch this is an older knife i don't know where this actual anodizing came from check that out augustus and it's got a little lobster with glasses on it that has got to be a company logo i'm not quite sure what that is might be a cuttlefish lobster i don't know but it's wearing glasses it's got to be a company logo this thing was made for somebody, for something, you can see the actual laser etching on the blade there. And so it kind of dates it, you know what I mean? Because that's a meme, right? That's an internet meme that's actually on the blade there, but it's a T-latch. And so it was made in the internet era, but previous to the actual spring latch introduction. And so it kind of gives you an overall date of the time that this thing was made. As well, the handles here, I don't know, I don't think this is an anodizing. It doesn't quite look like it's anodized. It looks more like kind of a powder coat, something like that that's been wearing off over the years. And so it's got a bite handle and a safe handle indicator, even without the latch, because this kind of teal color here, you can see that they're they're similar but they are a different color the safe handle here is kind of a teal color and the bite handle here is this kind of blue which is definitely interesting this is a very unique knife very individualistic knife which is interesting because if i could compare the benchmade 42 and desirability factor to anything in the current current world today it's gonna be gold right because i, I was thinking about this gold is only valuable i mean it's not. You know I mean, what's cool about gold? It doesn't change. It doesn't oxidize and it's shiny. It stays shiny forever. That's that's basically the only really cool thing about gold. But because it's really hard to find and when you do find it, it comes in very small bits, little very small amounts. And so it's rare. There's not a whole lot of it. It's got that desirability factor and therefore it's worth money, right? These things... These 42s literally do flip themselves apart. This isn't a knife that you're going to be able to pick up and flip hardcore for 20 years. You mean, it's going to fall apart. It really is. Even though it's made by Benchmade, this is definitely a quality knife. The tang pin on this thing was actually loose when I first got it. I have repressed it in since then. And you can see I altered it because the flat, you can see just the little, little bit of deformation that's actually on the top and the bottom of the tang pin. That's where the handles were actually coming in and squeezing it together. So it was squeezing the that tang pin together i took it out spun it around remounted it and so it's actually solid in there now and it improved the actual overall handle gap here you know so it's you know it it was a massive improvement there but the overall damage did occur right and that just came from general use and general flipping and the reason i say that is because there wasn't 
a massive amount of these things made. And so people playing with them, people actually using them is lessening the amount of them that's actually out there on the market, right? Is because they're being destroyed. People are altering them. People are, you know, modding them. They're doing these crazy things. They're, you know, modding the blades and regrinding the blades. And so there's just not a whole lot of the 42s actually left out there, right? The number of them is actually going down. And as well, the desirability factor. People want these things. They really do. They, they're, they're fun. I mean, it honestly is a fun knife, right? And so the desirability factors up there, the rarity factors there, and that's what demands the price for these things. Because this right here, with the damage that's on it, it's missing a latch. I've actually repaired it, you know what I mean? There was some there was some work that needed to be done with the tang pin, the kicker is has been beaten, the handle gap on the closed position is, it's solid, you know what I mean? There's still definitely a gap there, there's no actual touch unless I squeeze it really, really hard. I don't wanna do that, it's not my knife, you know what I mean? And so it, it's, it's still running in good shape, you know I mean, this knife is definitely in operable condition, but it is nowhere near mint. And it still demands a price tag of over $500. This knife is still a $400 knife. You know what I mean? $400 to $500 knife. That's still the price, even though it is in the condition that it's in, right? And so the only thing that I can bring up that really compares to this thing is gold. You know what I mean? It really is just like gold. And I think that's fascinating. There's not a whole lot of these things, and there's just becoming less and less of them all the time, every day, just from people using them, people having fun with them. And so the 42, the desirability for the 42, I really don't think is going to go anywhere. I love the T-latch design over the, over the spring latch, just because the overall... Just the design of it. I like the way that the channel is cut out here over the spring latch. The fact that you've actually got material in both of these sections here. You can see it's a little bit dished out there, but you've got less of a weight discrepancy between the actual handles themselves. I definitely like the T-latch version of the 42, but the spring latch is kind of the more iconic version. It introduced the spring latch into the production. Not limited, but actually production, Bally song, market, you know what I mean? And so the 42 definitely has its place in history, but I, I kind of like the T-latch version here. If I could have any of them, it would be a T-latch. Again, this is not my knife. It belongs to AMZ Alex Nav on Instagram. Check him out. I'll put a link to his page down in the description below. Thanks for letting me borrow this one, man. I truly appreciate it. It's given me a whole new understanding for a 42. This isn't the first 42 that I flipped, but it's the first 42 that I've actually you know, had in my house that I've had in comparison to others. And so I definitely appreciate it. I want to line these things up here. This is a Pacific Coast Cutlery Model 10. Obviously a Benchmade 42. This is a Benchmade 45, which was the predecessor to the Benchmade Model 42. And here is a 63. Beautiful, isn't it? Benchmade needs to make something with this hole pattern. They're not making anything with this Benchmade hole pattern. This is the bench. This is the standard Benchmade hole pattern here. You know what I mean? This is what meant, makes a Benchmade Valley song. I definitely do like. Excuse me. I definitely do like the look of the 87. You know what I mean? I can bring the 87 up in here and the 51, which have similarities. You know, there's characteristic similarities between these two knives, and especially you know the the what was it? The 239, I think, something like that. The 279. It's definitely similar in profile to the 87 here, but I think Benchmade just needs to go back to this straight up hole pattern. I freaking love it. It just looks excellent, and I've always wanted to stick a 42 up next to these ones here. Give you a, just a look at this. This is a 45 against a 42. You can see the changes in that Weehawk overall design there, but they're both a kicker design. Singular tang pin. Tang pin actually is. Look at the size of that. They seriously beefed up that tang pin on the 42 over the 45. Huh, that's cool. But that's it. I don't think it's the amount of performance or as high of a grade of performance as the market generally suggests making the 42 as desirable as it is. I think it's the fun. It's not that it performs, it's how it performs that truly makes this knife what it is. That's it. Y'all have a good one.